So if you are a regular to this channel, you'll know that a while back I was upgrading from a 2020 iPad to a 2021 and I was ranting that I couldn't use all my RAM. Well, that's all changed now. So let's just have a chat about what they did and what they released and what that means to us if you're looking at the higher end iPads. So earlier this year, and it's still 2021, I upgraded from the 2020 iPad Pro, uh, which has um, a whopping six gig of RAM, to the iPad 2021 with 16 gig of RAM. And the leap of uh, power that I was getting um, wasn't huge. So I was quite frustrated in that I'd got an extra 10 gig of RAM, and because iOS 14, only allowed each individual app to use five gig per app, then there was a problem. So we were hitting a bit of a bottleneck and there was literally no point in upgrading if you are using your iPad primarily for Nomad sculpting. Now, um, you may remember me doing Geekbench tests and clearly the iPad 2021 with the M1 chip um, has speed gains. So writing was faster, not hugely, um, the, the overall operating between different apps was working well and the Geek, Geekbench scores were quite significantly better. So there was definitely a performance gain. Um, but if you already had a 2020 iPad and you're like me, a jobbing artist, and we, you know, these are what these are some of our main tools now, you might have been considering to upgrade. Well, at that point, it wasn't worth it in any way, really. There was no gain. I, I still used my and still do my um, 2020. Here we go, 2021 with six gig. Uh, sorry, 2020 with six gig. Um, I, I, I haven't sold it because it's still a great machine. So the big thing is I, I bought a machine with 16 gig of RAM and I wanted to use it. So iOS 15 just came out last week. Uh, it's been in beta for a while, so we've known this is coming. And what it's done is it's allowed us to use that RAM. So I'm using models like this, or I'm using the iPad for models like this. Now, this one on screen, I'll hopefully zoom in and show you what's going on up here. But this particular model here is 18 million uh, vertices in the scene. So let's call it polygons for the sake of it. So 18 million on a mobile device is crazy, but I can get way more than that now. So I regularly now tested uh, for, for about a week. I've been going well over um, 25, 28, up to 30, 32 million. And I'm getting no problems at all, no lag. I'm, the real time is working well. All of the features I'd want in Nomad to make it a functioning um, uh, device for, for someone like me that does this for a living uh, was there. Uh, the, the, the limit or the ceiling I get is around the 40 million mark and I get crashes at 40 million polygons. Now, anyone who knows this and anyone who uses ZBrush a lot, you generally keep your models a lot lower than that and you might subdivide up or you might have them kept lower during the, the creation. Uh, each piece that you finish, you might have a low polygon version that you're subdividing up when you want to do the, 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 the micro detailing or the final detailing. But the thing is, I'm only getting the crashes at 40 million with a use, a RAM usage of only about six gig. So what that means, even though I've got all this RAM, I'm, I'm not able to go much higher and use all that RAM without a crash. So there is a ceiling and there is something that it's hitting that's stopping us going to that higher level. So for example, if this model was 32 million, which as you can see there, I'll just show you on screen, I've, I've regularly had it at that. Obviously, I'm using screen recording um, equipment here, so uh, uh, software as well. So I'm trying not to overload it to show you. But trust me, the, the 32 million, this performs really, really well. And that means I can literally go to poor detail on each of these component parts. If you look here, um, this I haven't named this and somebody pointed this out on Instagram is that I'm quite lazy even at this stage because I've got cylinder cylinder box cylinder but that's because this is this was a test um, this is an art this is a model for an article for 3d world so hopefully you'll see it uh, in 3d world at some point and I'm going to give one away um, as a 3d model but the point is that I was using, uh, and like here, for example, I'm only using 18 million polygons. I'm only using 3,408 3, of the overall 12 gig. Now, this machine's got 16. 
it allows me to have 12 for per app, or certainly for Nomad, it's allowed to have 12, and it's only using three, leaving me with nine free. So we're not in any way hitting a RAM ceiling anymore. So for me to now start subdividing these up um, any higher would, wouldn't be a problem until I get around that 40 million mark and then something else dies. Now, it could be that the real time can't cope. It could be something else in, in iOS that can't cope, but it's not really a problem. I'm not saying this as a as an issue that you know and i'm not a developer and i'm not a programmer and i don't understand fundamentally what what you know what's going on at the coding level but for me as a functioning artist and um, you know I, I need things to do what i want them to do this is not a problem at all the fact that i'm using you know the, here we're using three uh, three thousand four hundred if i get it up to 32 34 million i can be using six gig of ram um now if you've only got the six gig 2020 ipad obviously you're not going to get anywhere near that um because you're going to need a couple of gigs of ram to run the system the ios is going to need at least two or three so you'd probably be getting around this which is three four so theoretically you know you're going to get this sort of level you you know i, I was getting probably 24 25 million and still coping quite well on on the older ipad um but what you want is a seamless experience you the, the way i always dis describe it is i don't want to even talk about ram and that's how apple work Anyway, so we should be talking about what we're making and do, is it a seamless experience? Is the pen functioning well? Are you getting good, you know, no lag when you're sculpting on these things? So um, I'm really happy, really, really happy with the iPad 2021. I probably wish I'd have waited six months to buy it because I didn't need it up until now. Um, I'm really happy with Nomad and this is version 1.61. Um, so it's got some nice uh, bug fixes and a few other things. If you have a look at the change log as well, I'll try and include it in the description down below. But we're in a good place here with with um, uh, uh, Nomad, uh, and 1.61 is just a continuation of the great work that Steph Engineer does with 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 a, a, the iPad sculpting app overall. Now, something that you may be aware of is that Maxon bought Forgia some some while ago now. And it, I think I did see a post quite recently saying that they're going to do a, a release. Now, it will be a, a really good test when we see what they have done with it and what we can do with it with these newer iPads. So if you're on an older iPad, don't worry. If you're on a four gig iPad, so if you're looking at a 2018 iPad, it's still a functional app. I would still recommend it to anybody at the, at the 20. Um, 18 iPad Pro level. Um, if you've got the 2018 with one terabyte, you've got six gig of RAM anyway, I think it was. So, so you, you, you've been used to that RAM if you've got that higher machine. So you still probably don't need to upgrade at, at this stage. But if you're a power user and you want to really get to some big models that you're going to use back and forth with ZBrush and you're going to use it for high end, um, you know, a lot, a lot of people are using um, mobile sculpting now as their main sculpting tool because of the real time so it's not a you know it's still not a replacement for things like Maya or even blender or you know it, it's not for that it's an addition to that and it's certainly used by a lot of people like me who do all of those you know we use all of those pieces of software in our day-to-day -day life so you know stick with what you've got if you're coping with it be aware of this in case in case you're thinking of an upgrade in the future Thank you so much for watching the video and I really hope you're enjoying these kind of videos. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who like this sort of content. And there's now over 18,000 people subscribed to the channel. So we're growing at such an incredible rate. It really is quite gratifying for a content creator to, to see a growth of, of that nature. Um, so thank you so much for, for that if you're one of those subscribers. If you're not, I'd love you to be one. So smash that little button down below and hit the notification bell. If this this is the kind of thing you like we do offer a full range of nomad sculpt courses and if you head over to the description down below you'll be able to see all of the different uh, courses that are available we'll put a link down there to our store and you can see if there's a beginners course or a bit more of an advanced course that you might want to take so please feel free to have a look at those down below and have a great week